thanks again, Shelby. We've moved from our seated positions in our first segment and a little bit of breath work to a very quick standing pose segment and talked a little bit about rebounding and allowing the body just to have that nervous frenetic energy and then stopping and finding a pose to breathe and be in. And that can be sitting, standing, or laying down. We're gonna end with a couple short balancing uh, postures here on the blanket and then a short savasana. I love having chimes or bells uh, when I do my shavasana or even when I do breath work. You can use different things when you move into shavasana to be comfortable. Shavasana is corpse pose. So you're going to rest like the dead. I guess that's restful. <laughs> but these bean bags were donated by Miss Linda Cochran. That's fabulous. We appreciate that. These can be nice different placements under the thighs and we'll talk about it behind the knees. You can use the uh, Maya Fascia Release Balls, you can use Tennis Balls, uh, you can use the more uh, exercise fitness balls that are about six inches in diameter. So there's a lot of use for balls that we'll be playing with um, in classes. And some folks may need a slight elevation for their head. Uh, if you have a tendency to have your chin poked up this way and a shortened cervical spine, you want to be able to lengthen that and have the chin neutral or parallel to the spine. So a little lift might be positive for you. We talked a few moments ago about the different kind of straps. The longer the strap, the better. Most of them will say how long they need to be. This is eight foot, eight or 10 is pretty handy for doing a variety of things. This one doesn't say what it is, but it's only probably five at the most, six feet long. And this is the old metal buckles. There's nothing wrong with it. But if it happens to oops and bonks you in a tooth or something, it can hurt. So be mindful of that. And we'll go ahead and roll it neatly so we can put it away when it's time and set it aside. I have my blocks that we're going to use here when we come down onto the mat. Uh, we're going to do Padagustasana uh, <clears throat> on the ground here. And I'm going to find my booty in the center of the blanket, and I've got a little. And I'm going to come down from a seated position where my core is engaged. I'm lifting up, and I'm going to roll down one vertebra at a time. Oh, I'm going to fool myself because my blanket isn't where it wants to be, so I must come up one vertebra at a time and back down so the core is on here this is a great and a little bit difficult so you can walk the fingers down and walk the fingers back up when you come down to lay so might as well get a little extra work out of it and this feels good but i don't need this much of a lift from my head so i'm going to just enjoy my head flat on the ground again everybody's different right when you do bridge pose or any of these poses, feet should be on a mat, a hard surface, not the blanket. So if I plant my feet about hip width apart, I can gently push my feet through the earth and that creates like an elevator lift for my spine. Bridge, I'd be coming up rolling, set to bandha. Oh, one vertebra at a time and dropping down through the other upper vertebra and down. So I'm just coming up like an elevator, swishing the wrinkles out of my yoga pants, and that lengthens my spine just a tiny bit. So I can be more comfortable if you have a big lordotic curve in your lower back. We're gonna take our strap. We have a loop in it. We're gonna adjust the loop so that it can fit comfortably Yes, you can reach your feet with your hands. It means bending your knee towards your chest, and there it is. So stretch that loop around the ball of the foot. The hand can rest like a cradle there. You don't want this um, <clears throat> plastic on the skin or on the body parts anywhere or in your palm. It's uncomfortable. So just on the strap. Around the ball of the foot, it slips a little bit. And I want my shoulder to rest comfortably on the ground. I don't want it so pulled up 
that I'm like that, nor do I want it so my arm is bent. So just find a comfortable loop, and everybody's body will be a little bit different. Walk that lower foot towards the buttocks, lift, and again, that tiny little action of lengthening the lower spine <clears throat> on my right side. I'm not mirroring now, so we're all doing this together. I like to have a small landing strip, I call it. It could be a block. It could be any size block you need. It could be a rolled up blanket, a rolled up yoga mat, a yoga ball. Some people like them out here for the ankle to fall on. Because I have tenuous SI joints, I like it right here. And that way, as I'm supporting my other hip to stay on the ground, it's an idea, I'm not forcing it on the ground. As I inhale, I exhale and just let it open up. And it will naturally stop on my landing pad. So nothing is being strained here, but I'm getting a nice stretch. And I can point and stretch, flex through that foot if I want. Some very flexy, bendy people can just hold on to their toe and do this. But you notice how that brings it past 90. This is a lot more of a hamstring stretch. And if you have any plantar fasciitis or issues with tendons here, you're aggravating nerve train. <laughs> they can come right up there. So be, so be nice to yourself. You can even flex the knee a little bit if you need. But it's nice to open that knee all the way up. If, if your arm ain't long enough, then use the strap. There we go. So again, inhale. As parallel as I can consider my hips to be here, exhale. And don't let that opposite knee fall out. So this foot is active, the knee is facing the heavens. If that isn't enough of a stretch, you can walk this up a little further. Inhale, exhale. Oh, where'd it go? <laughs> Maybe even more of a stretch than I didn't want. So we can adjust. Yeah, it's still not quite there because it's straining through here. So I can either put it up this way or move it back a little closer. So find what works for you. There it is. Just that touch is a feedback loop that can be all the safety in the world. If not, you have a limb or a muscle or a fascia system or a tendon or a ligament hanging out there trying to hold on for dear life. And that's a good way to strain something that doesn't need to be strained. So a lot of happening here, my opposite um, iliac crest, the top of the hip. But the more I breathe and give it a moment, the more I feel the four points of the foot, the more it settles down. The pause is as important as the pose. And I'm going to inhale, bring the leg up, core is on. To add a little extra stretch here, I can cross gently over the midline of the body. And yes, there is an IT band there, and you will feel it. The arm can go out to the side for a little counterbalance. Uh, and we're going to do this one more time to the same side. You can do it three or four times to the same side. If you want a bigger stretch, you can slide, scrape, reach that opposite leg down. It's a much bigger stretch this way. So you can see, yeah. So again, I'm encouraging the opposite hip stay down. I'm encouraging the foot to reach through the strap and be flat. I feel a lot of lengthening. I'm at close to end range at the top of my hamstrings. So that's good feedback. I'm not going to go beyond that for the sake of injury. Then I'm going to sit with it a moment. If it ever feels like too much, bend this opposite knee. And come up. Slide stretch. 
for the piriformis here, my T band, and there's a little magic button right here behind your knee. Press it and it folds so gently and floats to the ground. So take a moment. Hands on the bellies, hands on the earth, palms up. Even if you have wrist or something problems, maybe you need it leaning on something. That's just fine. Your body is your guide. I want a little hug here and a little side to side action. And I'm going to release this. Of course, I would be doing this on the opposite side for balance. Uh, for strength, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it on the opposite side. But I'm going to stretch both feet into the air, walk the hips away a little bit so they stretch out, shake them out. Feels pretty good. This is enhancing lymphatic drainage. You want to do a little dry brushing, you want to do a little gentle raking, pulling the lymph down towards the groins where the lymph nodes are. We'll, we'll end up with a short legs up the wall without a wall. I know that's pretty odd sounding, but I'm pretty magical, so it's okay. But this is Vinaprina Karate, a fabulous nervous system reset pose. It's also very good for restless leg, uh, for people with lymphatic issues. And don't be afraid to touch yourself. I mean, good heavens, we don't get touched enough as it is. So, you know, Yes. Oh, I'm a wonderful person. I love it. <laughs> so that magic spot behind the knees, they drift gently to the floor. I'm going to feel all toes as I touch down. I'm going to take a yoga block or a ball, put it between my knees or thigh, whatever is most comfortable for you. I can feel which hip is a little higher or hips do interesting things. The iliac crest can one can be torqued forward, one can be torqued back, they both can be torqued you know, So this is what sets up that instability in the pelvic bowl. Uh, that tiny little SI joint can slip over each other. So it's a precious little joint in the sacrum area. So this helps reset it. We're in a modified bridge here. We're just put, we're actually relaxation pose before bridge, which softens the psoas, the hip flexor muscle that runs right here. We're going to put the core on. You see that gentle clamshell closes. Push gently with about 30% energy. Make sure the cervical spine is along. And breathe for 30 or 40, 50 seconds. You go to the PT, you go to the DO, these are some of the exercises they're going to give you to do. So why not do them through yoga? Engage the glutes, the inner glutes, you can pull up the perineal floor, so that's going to be strengthening all those muscles around the internal organs and the bladder, and if you have any bladder control issues, male or female, it can help. Feet off the ground, I'm still pushing. Stretch, I'm still pushing. Bend, I'm still pushing in. Release. And then let it go. Pause, but it doesn't fall out. Position two, feet are wide to the edges of the mat. If it slips a little, just readjust. If you need to change the head position because you need a little break from something, oh, it's way too high for me. This will change the action throughout the musculature of the ad abductors and the piriformis. You'll be surprised. So again, press, but before you press, core on, glutes, core, perineal floor, and press. 30 or 40% energy, maybe a minute. Try to do all three of these positions three times. That's exactly what the PT told me. You only get better if you do the work. So I was like, oh, that was the problem. I wasn't doing my yoga every day. <laughs> Release, I don't lose the block. 
Walk the feet together. Here we come. All the way out. This is actually part of the Founder Series work, too, that um, Eric Goodman. I'll have to rethink of his name. He's a fabulous. Uh, created a new kind of yoga, exercise, whatever, but uh, called the Founder Series. And it's particularly geared towards core and lower back. And I found it very beneficial, as did some of my other friends. He's a tall, long, torso person who's a surfer. And the longer your torso, the more chance you're going to have lower back issues. So he just developed this as a way to stabilize the core. So I'm getting my core on, my golden girdle, and I'm squeezing my glutes. My feet are up. I'm pushing in. Whole new set of muscle train here. You'll feel it. Subtle but powerful. And then you can use the hands on the earth for a little support. Lift. Release. Lift. Release. And if you don't think this is work, I'm sweating. Lift. I'm squeezing the glutes, release, into the chest, release. I'm going to remove the block, and I'm going to do the second part of the balancing for this before I drift into my Shavasana. And, yeah, Shelby, don't let me forget, legs up the wall. <laughs> So I'm just going to gently have my legs at about hip width apart. So instead of squeezing, now I'm going to pull apart. Same amount of pressure. Doesn't it's not. I'm trying to be King Kong or anything. I'm core is on. I'm lengthening the spine, and I'm going to add that 30 percent, 40 percent pressure. Core is on, I'm going to breathe, I'm going to hold 40 or 50 seconds. This can really reset the pelvis. Simple but effective. Release, walk the feet apart, adjust as you need, pull apart, the core is on, breathe. If it hurts any part of the body, maybe a knee injury, then, then modify. Don't do it. Uh, you can come up to the threshold of, oh, I really am aware of that. But please don't cross that threshold into pain. There's, there's no point in it. It's not necessary. It's not enhancing your body awareness or balance. When my clients come to my office, this is some of the things we do after the myofascia session, is we do these exercises to take home. When I went to the physical therapist, it was like, oh, same exercises. I haven't been doing them. So back we go again. And release. 